Hello and welcome to the Omics podcast. Uh, my name is Albert Vilella. Today I'm going to talk about long read, short reads, and read polishing. Um, I'm going to do a bit of an analysis of long reads versus short read technologies and see what connotations do they have with each other and see also what these new multi-pass reading technologies can bring to the to the plate. So long read technologies, uh, long read next generation sequencing, um, gives you reads that are longer, as the name says, and these uh, reads contain extra haplotypic information compared to short reads. At the same time, uh, the fact that the reads are long is beneficial for de novo assembly, which is a part of genomics, when you want to assemble the genome, a, a new genome from a new species or organism, or even an, an individual that already has a reference sequence. De novo assembly uh, is made easy uh, if you do uh, long read sequencing. The two main long read technologies currently for NGS are PacBio and Nanopore um, in historical order. Um, produce single pass readouts with lower quality scores than the two main short read uh, NGS platforms, Illumina and MGI VGI. Uh, that's where we are now, lower quality scores for the long reads than for the short reads. And so for quite a while now, there's been the concept of long read polishing with short reads as a way to combine both data types, long reads and short reads, and to improve the overall quality of the final product. Uh, recently though, and this is one of the main motivations for this um, podcast, uh, for this episode, PacBio, Pacific Biosciences, has implemented and is now commercializing their own version, their own multi-pass reading technology, which they term CCS or Hi-Fi, depending on um, where you see it, with claims to be the most effective standalone technology for de novo assembly of human genomes. And this is the claim that they have in a preprint that I'm going to describe. And the emphasis here is on the word standalone in this sentence, meaning if you were to choose only one technology and you want to assemble de novo, for example, a human genome, the size, a genome the size of human uh, genome, they claim their multi-pass technology is now the most effective technology. And so one question that we will pose uh, during this uh, episode is, are short reads needed anymore for polishing, polishing given, the, given the claim for the CCS Hi-Fi technology? And so the paper that we're going to describe is improved assembly and variant detection of, haplotype, of haploid human genomes using single molecule Hi-Fi long reads. Um, most of the people in this uh, paper are either at WashU, Seattle, or at PacBio, the company itself. And uh, Mike Hankapiller is still the CEO of uh, PacBio. Evan Eichler uh, has got the uh, uh, academic side in the last two author, uh, authors in, the, in this paper. In the abstract, it says, uh, sequence assembly of human genomes with long read technologies has revolutionized our understanding of structural variation, very important, and genome organization for things like translocations, duplications, etc. And then what they've done here is to use their new hi-fi technology and compare it to their uh, one-pass uh, CLR technology uh, by producing uh, data for a human um, uh, mole, which uh, uh, happens to be haploid. So CHM13 happens to be a genome, a cell line that people can grow, which contains only one copy of the genome, not two, right? And so even though this is a rarity, it doesn't happen uh, very often, it is a good uh, scientific tool to uh, test um, de novo assembly technologies because the fact that it's only got one haplotype, uh, one copy, it makes the, the task easier and um, just to perform and also to evaluate. Uh, the conclusion uh, from this paper in the abstract is that the HiFi sequence data uh, 
can assemble what they say is an additional 10% of du duplicated regions and more accurately represent the structure of large tandem repeats. So they say they get better um, data with this high fi te technology than anything uh, tried before. Uh, they then go and say, well, it still falls short of the assembly of centromanic DNA, the bit in between the two halves of the chromosomes for more, most of the human uh, chromosomes, the part in the center, centromeric, and the largest regions of segmental duplication. And they also say that the hi-fi method alone produces a slight excess of disrupted gene annotations. And so um, with their conclusion is that basically there's still a residual single base pair indole or micro indels that needs to be improved for this technology to be perfect or close to perfect. But uh, despite all the shortcomings, they suggest that HiFi may currently be the most effective standalone technology for the novel assembly of human genomes. And so how do they sequence this? Well, they sequence this with the newly announced PacBioSQL 2 technology, what they call version 7. And this um, essentially produces um, for one smart cell, the new smart cell of, with 8 million um, wells, about 20 gigabase pairs if it's run on CCS mode, multipass mode. And thus, if you do a full run of 16 flow cells, 16 smart cells, you can get up to 320 gigabase pairs per full uh, run. That's the lower bound in terms of total yield, uh, yield with this multipass technology. So higher Q scores, but because it's multipass, uh, you'll read the same thing several times. And so the final output that you get, effective output, effective yield, is about 120 gigs per full run. So you have to pay for all 16 smart 8 uh, million uh, well flow cells. On the higher end, but low quality Q scores, uh, they say they can reach up to, and it's difficult to say if this is going to be most of the runs or not, up to 150 gigabase pairs per smart 8 million well flow cell in CLR mode, so single pass. And then if you multiply that by the 16 flow cells in the full run, uh, you reach 2.4 terabase pairs, which is close to what Illumina can do with one Novasic flow cell at three terabases and a bit below half of what no, uh, Novasic uh, can do if you load the full run with two flow cells and similarly the MGI BGI technology. But you know, it's within the same order of magnitude than um, Illumina MGI BGI and uh, also close to what um, Oxford Nanopore can do on a Promethion with 48 flow cells loaded. Uh, same order of magnitude for the CLR mode. And then, so for a machine that will uh, set you back about 350K uh, in dollars, uh, they say they can get a human genome f uh, at 30X. 30X is probably um, an overestimate, maybe 20X or 15X for $1,000. But then the question is, is this going to be good quality hi-fi data or not? Uh, reagents about 20k depending how you calculate it and the price uh, for the lower end and higher end uh, varies quite substantially. All this and more you can find out on the website I maintain a bit.ly forward slash NGS specs. Now back to the paper the results say uh, let's use this hi-fi technology on the SQL 2 and compare it to the single pass technology CLR technology. Um, they compare this assembly with uh, the RS2, the previous machine from uh, PacBio, and the new machine, the SQL2. And they generated 24 fold hi fi uh, circular consensus sequence CCS multipass uh, data. And for each smart cell produced, on average, they got 19.1 uh, gigabase pairs, so close to the 20 gigabase pairs that they quote on their website. And uh, QV meaning uh, the consensus after passing multiple times for the same molecule is above 20. So a Q score of above 20 for the data of the sequence. And for these runs, they get about 19.1 on a range of 14 and 25. 14 is still, you know, not ideal. If you're going to run a flow cell and 
chances are you're only only going to get 14 instead of 20. That doesn't show um, perfect robustness. Uh, now, methods, what did they do? They applied Kano uh, to generate the de novo assembly. Kano um, is an academic software. I don't think it's been contributed into the code by anybody at PacBios. It's purely um, uh, academic software. And the HiFi data um, here, um, termed HiFi assembly, was compared to Falcon, which I do think has been produced uh, mostly by PacBio bioinformaticians. Uh, which was generated with 77 fold CLR data. So it's the hi fi versus the CLR. The hi fi assembly required this many CPU hours, and that's important as the price of sequencing keeps going down. Then it means proportionally the amount of compute you're going to have to spend to do something with the reads, um, it's a bigger and important consideration. Falcon, on the other uh, side, required about 20 times more compute and 50,000 50, CPU hours is not a small number. For those of you that receive invoices from AWS or Azure or GCP, the day you receive an invoice for 50,000 CPU hours, um, you're not going to have a, a happy face, I don't think, um, a happy reaction. Um, then they said it might be expected that the shorter read length of hi-fi may lead to a less continuous assembly. However, when they compare the numbers, they got an N50, meaning uh, the molecules have, uh, leaving 50% uh, of the data left and right was uh, almost 30 megabases long, whereas the CLR being, being uh, these um, longer per molecule, uh, longer reads, gave a very similar fig figure. So it's practically identical one to the other. How does this look graphically, right? If we lay out how they uh, um, placed all these contiguous regions, contigs, in the different human uh, chromosomes, how long are they? Uh, you know, on average, 20 something, 30 megabases. Well, here, chromosome one, the largest, uh, chromosome 22, uh, or, or 21, 22, the shortest, in two colors, this golden and this blue color, they're basically placing um, one contact after the other. So uh, a perfect uh, assembly would be one like this, where all the contacts are the same uh, color, right? They don't jump between one color and the other. There's a few gaps here, but this is centromatic region, so less important. And so here in the... And the zoom in, you see a contiguous region, and then there's a gap, and then there's another region, and then there's a gap, there's another region, then there's a gap, there's another region, etc. And so the question is, well, if you can lay this uh, down on the reference, you actually are doing a perfect assembly. Well, the trick here is that they're doing this on a genome, the human genome, for which the reference is already known, right? So imagine that we wouldn't lay down uh, these on the reference here in gray. It means instead of getting uh, 23 chromosomes or so, they would get more than them because for this one, they get one, two, three, four, and five pieces, right? So not perfect, but quite good, as you can see. And they also describe that the technology is not perfect in the sense that they sometimes they get misoriented contigs, um, as shown here, right? So, again, uh, contiguity, meaning can you get the full chromosomes end-to-end? -end? Um, that's one aspect, but can you get it correctly and not flipped around one strand to the other, Watson and the Crick strand? That's also important. Now, they did some uh, base accuracy estimates, and for that, what we did is they sequenced the hell out of a small segment of the human genome, a BAC, which is a bacterial artificial chromosome, a chunk of the genome uh, and the, that was produced from the same cell line, and then they sequenced it deeply, and then they uh, looked at how it would compare to the rest, right? And then in this experiment, they did read polishing of the CLR assembly. And so they said, let's do an assembly with CLR with Falcon and then try and improve it with a, an alternative technology, the short read technology that polishes the reads. 
and they saw that it was slightly superior to the Hi-Fi assembly without any polishing, right? With respect to accuracy, 35.7 to 34.4. Not a huge difference, but a substan uh, significant. And then they say that while the initial assembly of the Hi-Fi data was relatively rapid, if they wanted to do subsequent polishing of it, then you needed to add some more compute hours, right? So 2,800 versus 4,000. And then they say they use Rackon uh, for the Hi-Fi and um, to polish the, uh, the assembly using only the Hi-Fi reads. And then this Rackon for this um, back region, they only needed 23 CPU hours, so almost nothing. I mean, even on a on a desktop computer, that's not that much. Uh, but then they said the caveat is that it didn't improve CV accuracy by much, right? So it's like in into the third digit. How about segmental duplications? Uh, here it's relatively happy news. 43% of the segmental duplications uh, result obtained by the HIFA assembly compared to 34% with the CLR assembly. So, you know, it's a good improvement. This is the highest fraction on record, apparently, of resolved SDs for any of the published assemblies analyzed so far. And so this indicates that the HIFI assembly has fewer collapse sequences compared to the CLR assembly. This could be software, I'm speculating, with multiple SDs now represented by a single, cont single contiguous region. How about gene uh, open reading frame annotations? Here is where they said the technology is still not perfect and that the long read sequencing platforms exhibit high indole error rates. Some, some of these or most of these are micro indoles, micro insertions, deletions of one or two base pairs, uh, which happen for uh, the reasons of just simply the polymerases and the readouts not being perfect. The unpolished hi fi assembly, they uh, saw about 20,000 or so of these uh, micro indoles. And then uh, a bunch of them disrupting the, the open reading frame. And then they said, with polishing, they reduced it to almost nothing. I mean, 200, but you know, it's, it's a very small amount. And they did the polishing with Arrow. For the CLR as a comparison, 67% declined to 253, uh, 232 after polishing. And then they say, um, short read polishing may still be beneficial. That's one of the biggest statements here for a company that is selling long read technologies, right? They say on the basis of what we see here for open reading frame annotations, we cannot conclude that uh, short read polishing is gone and done. Uh, it still may be beneficial, right? So uh, who did this? Well, essentially the Pack Bio company, although it was a big collaboration with uh, Washo and NGRI, etc. cetera. Uh, Evan Eichler uh, is on the scientific advisory board of DNA Nexus and was, but not anymore, a scientific advisory mo uh, members or board of uh, Pack Bio, Pacific Bio Sciences, but you know, hasn't been around for six years or so. So, you know, it's not like the entire uh, author list is from the company. It's a, it's a company plus um, academia collaboration, this paper, and uh, uh, it's definitely not to the demerit of them. Right. I hope you enjoyed this episode of the podcast. Uh, as a reminder, you can follow me on Twitter, twitter.com forward slash Alvervilleja. You can also contact me via LinkedIn. There's a link here. I'm happy to answer any questions you may have uh, via LinkedIn. Uh, also via Twitter, and uh, as a reminder, this available, this slide deck is available upon request. Until the the next episode, goodbye.